I call Julian Gender. Mr. Chair, uh, we heard from KiwiRail at the Transport and Industrial Relations Select Committee, and looking at their financial report, it's very, very interesting because what we can see is that KiwiRail's business is actually very sound. Freight volumes moved by rail have been increasing rapidly, even though overall freight hasn't increased over the past few years. So we've got not had an increase in freight volumes moving around the country or into or out of the country as was anticipated, but on the rail we have seen a massive increase. Um, this is good for our exporters. Uh, recently I actually visited the Fonterra dry store and cool store at Weary. 40% of Fonterra's exports move through this store and 95% of what moves through there comes in and leaves by rail. So rail is incredibly important for our exporters. But what also became very clear during the financial review is that Kiwi Rail is simply not able to deliver the full transport benefits that they could deliver because the government isn't providing them with sufficient capital. And although they have, through the turnaround plan, um, you know, agreed to $250 million a year for a couple of years, but let's look at the transport budget. Uh, we have over a billion dollars a year each year going on new CapEx just on new state highways. Now, the problem with it, these duplicating links in our state highways is that they have diminishing marginal returns. We already have a state highway network. Um, it's working pretty well. We could have some cost-effective safety improvements that would result in great benefits, but putting in a duplicate link isn't going to have a very good benefit for the transport system. So the problem for KiwiRail and the problem for New Zealand is that the national government doesn't understand how a transport network works. Um, if you invest in the rail network, that directly affects how the road network is used. In fact, our transport network is entirely full of cross-subsidies. So the line that we often hear from the government that roads or user pays and rail doesn't pay its way, it's subsidized, is completely erroneous and doesn't take into account the fact that we have massive cross-subsidies going on. This is clearest in the government's CapEx priorities. So the highways that they're prioritizing, like Transmission Gully, could never be paid for by direct user charges. That's the reality. If you tried to fund them through direct user charges, the tolls would never cover the cost. So it's road users all over New Zealand who will be paying for a road that's only used by about 10,000 people in the case of Transmission Gully. And so that's a big cross-subsidy. But if we were going to take an economically rational approach to the transport network, what we would do is put the money in the projects that have the greatest benefit. And the next dollar that we spend on transport infrastructure would be on rail because it allows a more it allows a more efficient use of the entire transport network. So, for example, Already, rail freight is paying for itself despite the massive capital investment that's needed in New Zealand's neglected railway system because of 10 years of privatization. But the passenger service is making a very tiny loss of about $3 million a year. To put that into context, um, $3 million is probably the cost of one intersection or one roundabout. Um, it's a tiny amount of money that might be put into the state highway network to get some safety benefits, supposed safety benefits. But if we were comparing it on a case on, on an equal footing and treating rail on as part of the transport network, we would take into account the safety benefits of moving more freight off of the roads and onto the rail network. It has benefits for consumers, it has benefits for exporters, it has safety benefits. It's an entirely economically rational approach that most countries around the world are taking. If you look around the world, most countries are investing significantly in rail because it makes economic sense, it's highly energy efficient, and it would reduce the amount of money that the transport sector has to spend spend on oil to move things around. We're spending $8 billion a year on oil that we're importing, which is bad for our current account deficit. So investing in the rail network is good for our current account deficit. It reduces the dependency of our freight sector on oil and the vulnerability to high oil prices, and it reduces the amount of money that we have to spend on maintaining and improving the safety on the road network. This is an economic 
economically rational approach to transport that we don't see coming from the National Party, and it's really a lost opportunity. The Green Party would invest in rail. Well, we've just heard a supposed discussion lecture.